Okay, first question. Dion, when uh, Pivak made mention that last year's game against against you guys in Cardiff, they did everything well except stop your scrum. Uh, and that's obviously been a huge focus point for them this time around. Do you see that as where the game's going to be won and lost again? Uh, set pieces is always very, very important um, um, in test matches. Um, you want to have top quality delivery in order to uh, to get your attack going um, or to, st to stop opposition's momentum. So uh, the scrums is going to be important. Um, I think the line-out malls is also going to be important um, uh, to ensure your delivery. And uh, yeah, I think um, Wales is a very, very competitive side. Um, if, you, if you look back into in that game, um, they stayed in the fight right until the last minutes, and, and it's actually when we we scored that mall try towards the end that actually uh, put us um, uh, put us ahead uh, in order to win that game. So it's going to be very competitive. Is there concern, perhaps, from your side that yeah, some of the South African public, uh, because of Wales's performance in the URC and, and 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 in the Six Nations that last game, maybe feel that you guys should be on top of them very very easily, much more easier than it's been in the past? No, not at all. Um, if you look at Wales' team closely, you would see that they've got very um, experienced players in their team. A lot of British and Irish Lions. Uh, they, uh, they've got a lot of test caps at the back and in the forwards. Um, they had about four weeks to prepare for this because of the result of the teams is out of the URC. So I think they will be well prepared. Um, and in all the games that we played against them, um, whether it's from last year's World Cup, the end of or the previous year's World Cup, uh, the last year's game um, it was always um, tight right until the end and um, I think they're, they're a team that are very desperate in terms of, 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 of changing things around for them and um, I mean we remind ourselves a couple of years ago we were also very desperate in terms of changing things around for us and when you play against a team like that um, you've got to be, pre be prepared you can't underestimate any team at, I think at test level so, so we expect Wales to, to really show up and, and really give us a, a, a tough game and, and we prepare for that. Ken? Um, Dion, I guess the one difference uh, from the last couple of times you've played Wales is that the Saturday you're playing them in Alphabet Victoria. Uh, how much of a factor is that and as a home ground is not? Uh, the altitude will always be a factor for teams coming here, but um, I think teams also evolved in terms of their scientific approach to cope with that. Um, and uh, I think uh, Wales um, have also done a lot of research on that and prepared in terms of that. So uh, it will be tough, but, but I believe they, they will be conditioned enough to hang in there for the full 80 minutes to make it competitive. Um, we saw what happened now this morning in New Zealand with the COVID uh, situation that's developed there. Has that maybe changed the way you guys are going to take on this week and uh, maybe changed uh, your protocol for the week? No, I think things stay exactly the same for us going forward. I, um, obviously, we've just, um, I, haven't, have, I don't have in depth knowledge about what actually the situation is there, but um, um, we became aware of that. But for us, um, the thing, the way we pre we prepared our week. Um, it stays exactly the same up to this moment. Uh, Coach, just statistically in the last <coughs> 12 years, the incoming tour has always been the, the time where Springboks have usually blooded new players. Um, obviously, you're a bit robbed of that 2020 season, but how much is it an opportunity now, um, obviously every month is a month close to the World Cup, but how big an opportunity is this July period to, to bring in a few new players? Uh, definitely, uh, uh, our mindset is obviously we work towards a bigger picture um, because we're so close towards the World Cup. Um, but also important, you want to win games. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna build momentum. You wanna build confidence. And um, so, yes, it's it's important for us um, to to breed um, or give young players an opportunity. But it's also important for us to get the balance right okay, in terms of of um, looking. Um, where our senior players are at, um, um, look at different variables, like things of performance and building combinations and stuff. Um, so obviously that will be our mindset in terms of, of, of looking at, listen, how can, we, how can we get that balance right, but also ensure giving us the best possible opportunity to, uh, to win test matches and, and then build from that going forward. Um, along with a couple of the guys here, 
up when the last time was that the box played at home in front of Full House or something very close to it. Yeah. It's been four years. Um, how much an advantage to you is the fact that after four years you are playing a test match in front of a home crowd that is almost occupying every city? Obviously, we we were very excited to to, to play uh, in front of the, our home crowd after we won the World Cup. I um, think everyone is excited uh, to do that. Um, uh, we actually, you know, in a, in a way, it's it's important to say thank you for the people for supporting us for for so long, and uh, um, and it's also going to be important for us actually uh, in terms of reward them in terms of the way we play and and feed from their energy. Um, um, on game day, so yeah, all of us. It's, it's going to be a special occasion for us to to play in front of the home crowd after four years. And, and given that, and I know you've been very polite about Wales, but you are the world champions. They lost at home last time out to Italy. From your perspective, what is the minimum requirement in terms of result outcome this weekend? Now listen, uh, if you, um, I think everyone is focusing on the Italy loss. Um, a couple of years ago, we also lost against Italy. But I think what we need to understand is if you look at the Six Nation games and the other games, is that uh, um, Wales were actually in that games right until the end. If, uh, in terms of, of uh, uh, the, the, the games that they've lost. So, they, as I said before, they're a competitive side. Um, they play with a lot of passion and a lot of pride. Um, they're in a situation where they want to turn things around for them. They've got experienced campaigner, um, Dan Bigger, Alamon Wynne Jones, uh, um, Williams, all of those guys, Josh Adams, all of them are British and Irish Lions that have been here a couple of months uh, um, in South Africa, um, who understand uh, um, the environment, understand the way we, we, uh, we do things and what the challenges would be. So. We are under no illusion um, that, that it's going to be a tough, tough series, um, and, and that is how we approach it. Yeah, obviously we, we had some insightful uh, discussions around that and, and, and as I said we've looked at different things in terms of, of what we want to achieve in this first test and, and obviously um, who's going to be the right players and the right combinations that, that at this stage will, will we, which we feel will give us a good result. Uh, um, so, so our thoughts is, is, is around those, kind, those things. Everyone is available, I think despite uh, um, um, Peter Steve de Toy, who is still in his rehab, uh, for this first test, but other than that, we look at all the players uh, available, and, and and start seeing in terms of, of who's going to be the best combinations for us going into this first test match. Um, so those are players that came from the URC. Um, obviously, they they came straight into our into our training camp. Obviously, we didn't have, as a result of regula regulation nine, we didn't have the other players available. So this week is actually the first week where. They will be involved, and 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 we will have to uh, to put the work in in order to uh, to get them going, to get the combinations going, and and to get the detail and, and, and stuff nailed in for Saturday, and and yeah, and so it's, so it's a very important week for us this week going into the test. Um, coach, when uh, uh, concerning uh, Jasper Visser, uh, firstly, has he? in the country now, he's supposed to land today if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And then, um, is there enough time, because the general consensus is that he's going to be one of the starting players, is there enough time for him to acclimatise to the conditions in Victoria, the altitude and so forth and so on, to take up that eighth man position? Obviously, uh, uh, the medical staff and I see the conditioning staff um, together with, uh, with us had a, had a discussion about all of those factors. Um, we have our training session this afternoon and obviously the team will be announced officially tomorrow. 
So, uh, but those are things that we that we definitely take into consideration and make make the best decision for the play and for the team going going forward into this test match. Coach, uh, just sticking to that, you obviously talking to a lot of the players joined the camp. Uh, we had two teams in the finals, often competition, and in South Africa winning. Yeah. How have that group of players added to the morale? of the team and how has that changed the morale of the team in China since they came in having done so well in that competition at all? Especially looking at the fact that we came and made the limits of your opposition yes. uh, this week. Now obviously when you when you win competitions um, it brings a lot of confidence. The players come with a lot, lot of confidence into um, into the squad. Uh, um, yeah, it, it creates an environment where where you where you actually have a broader base of players that that, I, that, that you actually can, can look at uh, in terms of as I said going forward um, and I think um, they, the players also understand it's, it's not only always about the match 23 it's about it's about also about how you prepare the match 23 going into a test match and the contributions that they can make um, when they come in obviously also it's it's support it's important to align in terms of of how we at, at the Springboks are doing things differently in terms of what they've done in their franchise. So so coming in with that confidence, coming in at form, it's good for us. But there's all, as I said, there's things that we have to consider in terms of, listen, how quickly can we get a line, understand how, how quickly can we get that combinations right in terms of where players are and what we've saw um, in terms of how they can contribute to our success on Saturday. Uh, but having them here coming from um, from um, finals and, and, and winning finals, um, also guys like Andre Pollard then coming from overseas, uh, played in the final, winning final, all of those stuff contribute to, to an exciting environment to be. One couple of last thoughts here. First of all, Jasper, it will be his first session back with Box to Guys. Yes. It will be his first session. Yes. And secondly, Peter Stephan, the toy, can you just elaborate on where he is in terms of his fitness? Uh, he's busy with his with his rehab and uh, with after his shoulder operation. Um, I think he will be cleared in terms of that on uh, in the vicinity of Thursday. So obviously he will then be considered for for the second test going forward. Guys, we've got Ox here as well. Hey, if anybody okay. would like to pop a question to. <laughs> no no pressure, oh, no pressure. thanks, Brendan. <laughs> Ox. Just, uh, just wondering, I mean, the success you guys have had against the Welsh regions in the URC, um, has made, all the South African teams have had a lot of success around them. As a player, does it maybe take away a bit of that aura around the Welsh team, the fact that you guys have been so successful against the regions, or is Test Rugby totally different? No, I mean, tis, for me, Test Rugby is completely different. I mean, for the mere fact that sh sh we did well against the Welsh teams, but I mean, they're playing for a country uh, which is much more bigger. So, and I think, uh, as where the like the country's rugby is considered to be by m most media franchises, I mean, they want to prove a point. You understand? So, I think, <coughs> like Coach Dion said, they're desperate and a uh, desperate team that's willing to prove a point that are <coughs> willing to show actually they're one of the top rugby nations in the world. So, will probably come out guns blazing, and they're gonna pitch on a day. So you expect them to come at you on Saturday and scrap? Yeah, pretty much. That's good. Uh, Oxen, the Welsh coach went to London twice. Uh, uh, how do you guys receive that kind of uh, praise uh, in terms of being regarded as world class right here? Uh, went as far as to say the best in the world. I mean, it's, uh, I only say it's like an all eight pack. If, our, if all of us decide to pitch on the day, then we de we're definitely going to like try and pose our like, presence on them. So I don't think it's just because you had probably had one good performance against, against them, makes you like all of a sudden you think you'll always do good against them. So I mean, who's more prepared on the day and who pitches up on the day will probably be the best team on the field that day. So, 
Well, like I said, it's 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 all about. I mean, a guy, a 21 year old, can have more pride than a guy that has been in the system for a long time, and like for the country. So I promise you, it's like no one is. We don't go into a game thinking, you know what? No, they probably have youngsters that are inexperienced. I mean, those youngsters could be the best players on the day. So I think it's important to understand that out there, like the Coach Dion said it, like they're very competitive. And I think they'd wanna, they know South Africa is the number one like rugby nation in the world and they want to prove something. So I think you know, that's pretty important to consider. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm a bit more aligned with in terms of what, what the coaches expect from me, and uh, I just have to focus on my job. There's nothing like that, I, like they can distract me anymore. Like I'm more aligned with the team now, and I think that that's what actually just gives me confidence. The fact that you know I know what Coach Dion expects from me in the lineups, I know what Coach Jock expects from me, and that's yeah, that's where I get my confidence from. Okay. Um, you had mentioned that uh, Wales are a very good second side. Uh, you guys have just come out of URC, which is quite, quite an emphasis on technical in, in URC. Do you feel that um, previously it's super rugby? Like you guys come out of super rugby like and you feel there was less of an emphasis on technical there? So, uh, when you come out of URC, you know, you guys have been able to get it. Oh, that's pretty tough but I think honestly they kind of give a similar competitive edge because I mean Super Rugby they, they have good scrums but they just come differently in terms of like like it's technicals like small technical stuff that make a huge difference and in the northern hemisphere as well they all have like similar systems which are also like different to, uh, to Super Rugby but the challenge is still the same either way because I mean uh, you might scrum against a guy in the URC that will probably be able to scrum a guy in Super Rugby but then you're up against him and he gives you like more problems than the guy that you scrummed in in Super Rugby and vice versa. So I think it's, yo, it's, it's a very tough question to ask but I, I can't say one competition set pieces like uh, as less than the other really. They all just have like different challenges. Guys, we've got 13 minutes left, so I just uh, we can fire in any language. I know there'll be a few Afrikaans questions for Dion and, and Suta for Ox, so if you want. Ox, uh, with regard to the alignment camps, how did you enjoy those? Because I know initially you started with fewer players, but as, they, you know, as it grew, it kind of gelled very well, didn't you? Yeah, we did. I mean, it's they were great in terms of you get a clear picture of what the coaches want. I mean, you already know by the time like we all come here together, I mean, we have guys only like joining us this week, but in theory they all know what is expected of them and they just have to put in practice. So it was a great experience because it, it simplifies your job. You know what to expect, you know what is needed for you and how you're going to be measured. So yeah, I enjoyed those. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you're part of them because, I mean, it was an all South African URC final. So you're definitely part of them, but you know they got there because they won four. So you also know that, you know, because even when watching them, you know, like, hey, we, we, we're, gonna, we're not like opponents anymore. We're actually teammates. And they, like, they naturally, they have to bring, like, they bring the best out of, out, out of me and I have to do the same. So, because you know where they've been, you, you've seen their form, you've seen their until how good of a season they, they've had, and you, you're trying to match that, and you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, 
I mean, the coaches have have a better perception in that plan because I mean, you you might not know like one guy might actually still have a more a lot more to give, and the other two might need to go off because they've done their jobs. So I think uh, they'll have a better plan on how they're going to conduct it this year, and yeah. At this stage, we are very fortunate um, to have a lot of uh, talent in different positions. Okay, if you look across the board in terms of the loose forwards, um, there's exceptional talent um, in six, seven, and eight. Um, so, so when a player is in form and he, and he produces, um, a guy like Marcel is also experienced. Um, he's been a Springbok. Um, he had consistent performances. So, so I mean, a player like that can all can just add value to the whole Springbok environment. Um, the same you can say if you look at the locks that we have um, um, available. Um, the players are, are, are very competitive and almost like for like in, 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 in those positions, four or five. Um, on the gentleman question also in terms of our front rows, okay, um, I think we, we, we blessed in terms of, of the talent that we, for instance, have in terms of, of, of uh, of, of, of tight five forwards in one, two and three. Um, so it's important for us um, to align all the players in terms of what is expected from them and, and how they can contribute and, and, and to ensure that we create an environment that is competitive, but it, it, it's, it's competitive to bring the best out of each other and understanding, um, um, as I said, whether I'm in the team or not in the team, that my contribution it's about it's about the big picture. It's about it's about it's in the interest of Springbok rugby, being the best, staying the best, uh, and, and and working towards the next World Cup. And I think if you if you have that healthy competition um, um, amongst all of these players, at the end of the day, it, it actually comes down to what you want to achieve on the day, and 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 what player um, is going to give you that, and how how easily he can slot into that into that specific position. Um, so yeah, um, it, it, it's it's insightful. It, it's sometimes uh, uh, um, difficult to have those uh, those converse, conversations and, and to make those decisions. But but it's good to have. It's good to have um, all the, all all that talent and experience available. And just as a follow up to that, <coughs> is there then potentially room for both the Marcel and the Gray to be in the same setup, building towards uh, the World Cup next year? Yes. Or is it more of a Obviously, we will have to. When you go to the World Cup, you can only have a certain amount of players. I think it's around 33 that you can take. So, some is going to be in, some is going to going to fall out. But I mean, playing these test matches, uh, um, building experience, testing combinations, working for the best results, give you an opportunity to, at the end of the day, uh, get to that. I mean, anything can happen in rugby. There can be injuries. Um, just before you go and stuff, and then it's important to 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 have that picture in terms of the performance of a player and who's going to best to fill in those in, in that specific position. And I, and I think that is part of the mindset. Guys, we've got seven minutes, so if you want to find any other language, please do so now. Bata. Mm -hmm. Wallis, ja, wat Afrikaans. Okay. Nu ons verwacht dat Wallis gaan baie competeren in uh, die komende naweek. Um, soos, soos ons gesê het, ons kyk glad nie vast in resultaten nie. Voor ons is het belangrijk om tot die beste van ons vermoe voor te bereid. Wallis is een span met baie ervaren spelers. Uh, spelers wat vir die Brits in Eerste Leeuws gespeeld het. Um, as jy kyk na die toetservaring van die spelers, achter- en voorspelers, is een spelers met, met, met baie ervaring. Soos een baie ervaren groep spelers, uh, um, wat, wat, wat tans in Zuid-Afrika toe. Um, Wallis is ook natuurlijk in een positie waar hulle baie graag hulle wil verbeter op hulle vertonings en, en die seizoen vir hulle wil omdraai. Um, so hulle is desperaat vir dit en, en, en as een spannende situasie is, 
dan kan je verwachten dat je bij je competerend gaan weer op die dag. En, en zo ons, aan ons kant af moet ons zorgen dat ons zo so goed als mogelijk voorbereid om aan het einde van die dag te zorgen dat ons uh, uh, die beste resultaat kan krijgen en die aan die toetsen. Ja, definitief. Ik ben Pieter Stef, de uh, beste speler in de wereld. Op, op de woorden geweest, de wijn, die ons uh, spelen bij een belangrijke leiderschaprol. Uh, en ze inpakken in die, in die, uh, die spannen is, 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 is groot. Maar aan het einde van die dag is het een kwestie van om, om, het, om die glas meer vol te zien als half leeg. Ik denk dat het een uitstekende kans om, om jong mannen um, in, die, in die span uh, moeilijk blootstelling te geven. Ons het ook baie veelzijdige spelers in onze groep. Als je nou denkt aan ouders zoals Franco Moster, wat flank of, of slot kan spelen. Um, je hebt ook een sociaal regelo, um, jong mannen wat inkom, um, je hebt Evan Roos, je hebt zo. So, ja, um, natuurlijk zou so je wel bouwen op. Um, um, uh, je wil continuïteit uh, en, en je wil, wil die type ervaren spelers deel het van, uh, van je span op enige dag. Maar aan de andere kant geeft het ook een kans voor ons om, om breer te kijken in een moeilijk nieuwe talent, een kans te geven om ervaring te maken. Zijn er vragen voor ons, guys? Iemand? We hebben nog vier more minuten. If anyone wants to ask anything else? Nee, definitief. Um, ik denk um, om je seizoen op een winnoot te beginnen. Het zit allemaal in een goede spatie. En uh, je wil eigenlijk continuïteit bouwen um, met die kampioenschappen wat voorlezen en dan ook een dag in het einde van de jaar toe. Ja, so onze, onze doelwitte blijft precies hetzelfde. Natuurlijk voor ons is, is om te winnen, om nummer 1 te blijven, um, om mijn momentum te bouwen. Maar ook in dezelfde tijd natuurlijk om, om te transformeren in die zin van hoe ons goed te doen. Op en van die veld, um, um, hoe ons, hoe ons uh, um, uh, creatief kan raken als een span om soos ons voeren te gaan, maar ook om diepte te bouwen. So, so dat blijft onze kern eigenschappen waar naar ons kijkt um, um, en onze, en onze focus op onze visie voor het seizoen. Maar om te beginnen met de win, dat is voor ons bij belangrijk. Coach, uh, without giving away the keys to the castle, I know it's tomorrow, but you've mentioned some of the younger players and the opportunity to maybe bring in new combinations. Can we expect some surprises when you announce the keys tomorrow, or are we looking at a general consistency as we've seen in the last couple of years? I think we must wait for that until tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I think that's the best way I can answer it for you. Um, as I said, obviously we. We still have our training session this afternoon, and uh, yeah, we will we will conclude with that at the end of the day session. And then the other question is, um, not to put any aspersions on it, but the New Zealanders have started up again with the South African way South Africa plays rugby. Um, you know, in COVID situation, uh, it was very much trying to just button down and button down the hatches and win games. Mm. Is there going to be a more look towards a new type of more 50-50 game plan that's a bit more free-flowing or can we expect to say a similar type of game plan that we've seen in the last two seasons? Now obviously at the end of the season we reviewed um, what we've done um, in, the, in, the, in the last year uh, very carefully, um, looked at all the different departments and uh, um, obviously I think there's a, there's a core way in terms of how we do things um, if it works for you. Um, it's simple, you continue to do it. If it doesn't work for you, you have to have, to have a look at, at why it doesn't work to make a decision whether changes is needed or you just have to be better in terms of how you execute it. And I think that is, that is pretty much our, our mindset in, in terms of the game plans and the stuff that we prepare going forward. Cool guys, any last question to close off? I 
I think he trained there because we were quite low in numbers in terms of our conditioning camp. Um, but as a 15, at times always a guy comes in as, as a first receiver um, as, as the game developed into, into general attack. Um, to answer the first part of the second part of the question, I think also you must, I think we must wait until tomorrow to see uh, what our, our thinking is around that. But, cool. yeah, okay. no, it's fine. Happy? Yeah. Okay. Thanks guys, thank you for being here, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.